Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. First, if you like my videos, please subscribe, share, and hit the thumbs up. Also, please consider contributing to my Patreon. Every bit goes back into my videos to make better videos with better content. I have been wanting to make a video about Carl Lumley Jr. basically since I started making videos, but it's weird because even though there's kind of a lot of information out there about him, there's also not a lot of information out there about him. Uh, everything kind of seems to have the same paragraph kind of over and over and I just never really felt like I had a complete picture of who he was. But I was really able to dig in and find some new great resources and I finally feel ready now. Here's what you need to know about Carl Lemley Jr. First, Carl Lemley Jr. was not born Carl Lemley Jr. He was named Julius after his paternal grandfather, but as far as I can tell, I don't think anybody ever really called him that. He was always referred to as Carl Lemley Jr. or just Jr. And just like everybody else, he called his father Uncle Carl. Jr. was born April 28, 1908 in Chicago, Illinois. It seems he went from there to New York City and then finally to Universal City. His mother died when he was just 11 years old. I know that was really hard on him. I know it was really hard on his father too. But he and his father shared a really close bond. In fact, at the end of this video, I will share with you a fact that shows you just how close that bond was. But at just six years old, Junior started following his dad around the studio, trying to learn everything that he could. And he split his time growing up between New York and California, between school and the studio, but he absorbed everything like a sponge. And when he was 21 years old, his father really felt like he was ready to take over. So for his 21st birthday, he named Carl Jr. Director in Chief of Production at Universal, which meant that he was in charge of everything. And some people considered it nepotism, but I mean, if you think about it by that point, Junior grew up in the industry. He knew the whole thing inside and out. My Aunt Carla once said in an interview, Junior was a lot more on the ball than people gave him credit for. He was called a rich man's son. That was true, but he did have a vision and a sense of what people wanted. Two of his first films were All Quiet on the Western Front, which won Universal its very first Oscar, and The King of Jazz, which I also made a video about that you should also check out. Junior chose the directors, he cast both films, and coordinated the productions. No small feats. Junior rose to his position at an interesting time. The film industry had been around about 20 years, but talkies were brand new and changing everything about the industry. Junior had a big advantage in still being so young, but already having so much experience. He had a really good idea of what it was that the world wanted to see. He was responsible for the slew of horror films that Universal's now known for. Frankenstein, The Mummy, Dracula, The Invisible Man, all of them. It wasn't his father's idea, and it certainly wasn't his father's favorite idea to be making all of these horror films, but Junior saw the potential. And as a side note, I love imagining the struggle there because we always think of Senior as revolutionary and he loved taking risks, but somehow he was the one arguing for a little more tradition when it came to his son. One of Junior's other filmmaking traits may have ultimately led to the downfall of his tenure at Universal. In those days, the trend was really to crank out as many films as you could. The emphasis was more on quantity and less about quality. But Junior preferred making fewer films and putting bigger amounts of money into them. This was good in some ways. He made some really brilliant films. But because it was a different way of doing things, it was harder for him to keep people's trust in his projects. The big example of this is Showboat. Junior had spent huge amounts of money on the production of the film, and Carl Limley Sr. took out a loan with Standard Capital, basically putting up the studio as collateral. Standard Capital called in the loan before the movie came out, I think sort of just to capitalize on the fact that they could get the studio, but because the movie hadn't come out, they couldn't pay back the loan. That's ultimately how Junior and Sr. lost Universal despite the fact that when Showboat came out, it was the biggest film that Universal had ever had. So that's awesome, and I'm not bitter at all. Carl Lemley Sr. left Universal entirely, and there were rumors that Junior would stay on and continue to work there, but soon after, he turned in his resignation as well. In his time with Universal, he wrote more than 30 films and serials and produced more than 150 projects. 
After Universal, Junior had a brief stint at MGM before just retiring from the business entirely. Every now and again through the 60s, there were actually articles of Junior being attached to projects or considering projects, but nothing really happened. So now onto his life outside of work. It's interesting because I feel like Junior gets a weird rap sometimes. I always had this idea that his last 40 years were really sad and he was a loner. And it's interesting because when I was reading newspaper articles and interviews and letters, I really found him to be a totally different guy. So his real quirk, which I think is the root of a lot of things about Junior now, is that he was a hypochondriac. Now, I do think they may have thrown around the word hypochondriac a little bit like the way we throw around ADD or OCD today. I found lists in the newspapers of Hollywood hypochondriacs and jokes, but I'm not denying that I do think Junior was a hypochondriac. Other than that, he just really seemed to have a very active social life. Just like his father, he loved playing poker. He was always out with a different girl. I constantly see him referred to as Hollywood's most eligible bachelor. He was a regular at the Trocadero, loved throwing big parties at his house. He never got back into film, but he just seemed to live the life. His father died in 1939, and for a few years, Junior continued living his house on Benedict Canyon, but later moved to a house not too far away on Tower Grove in Beverly Hills. Junior thought the world of his father and wanted to do everything he could to make him proud. In addition to following in his footsteps at Universal, he also did everything that he could to secure affidavits and get Jews out of Germany during World War II. In the 70s, Junior got multiple sclerosis. He was bedridden in his final few years, but remember how he said that I would share something that showed just how close he and his dad were? Well, Junior and his father died 40 years to the day apart from each other. Junior passed away September 24th, 1979. He was 71 years old, and he's now buried with his father and our other family members. Junior is definitely a relative where I wonder what if. He was so motivated, so hardworking. He had accomplished so much at such a young age. I mean, the movie that lost him, the studio, ended up being one of Universal's biggest hits, but it didn't even matter. So, I mean, despite his hypochondria and his anxieties, he still lived a great life. You know, he lived a 71, that's not bad. But I just sometimes wonder what could he have become or what would have happened had he not lost the studio, had things gone a little different back in the 30s. I'm happy I finally got to share Junior with you all. Please leave any questions or comments below. Please subscribe and check out my Patreon. And a special shout out to Drew Maples, who blew me away with your contribution and your letter. Thank you. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta.